and the Holy Spirit. Beloved, I greet you all in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Today's message is entitled, True Worship. And we are going to look at it from John 4, verse 24. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for your word that does not come to you void but accomplishes its purpose. Lord God Almighty, as we delve into your word, give us the understanding. Give us the courage. And let us go forward in your word. Father God, let everybody who is listening to the son of my voice on Facebook and all the social media be attentive to this word so that people will know how to worship you in spirit and in truth. Father, lead us by your Holy Spirit. God and guard us and let us have the day of Pentecost experience. In Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. True worship. True worship is God-centered worship. People tend to get caught up in where they should worship, what music they should sing in worship, and how their worship looks to other people. Focusing on these things misses the point. In John 4, verse 24, Jesus tells us that true worshipers will worship God in spirit and in truth. This means we must worship God from, our, from the heart, the way God designed it to be. Worship may include praying, reading God's word with an open heart, singing, playing an instrument, participating in communion, and serving others. It is not limited to one act, but is done, but is done properly when the heart and the attitude of the person are in the right place. It's also important to know that worship is reserved only for God. One of the Ten Commandments tells us to worship God alone because it is essential in our relationship with him. Worship is not the slow song that we sing. Worship is not the amount we place in the offering basket. Worship is not volunteering in the children's church. Yes, this may be arts or expression of worship, but they do not define what true worship is. True worship, in other words, is defined by the priority we place on who God is in our lives and where God is and where God is on our list of priorities. True worship is therefore a matter of the heart expressed through a lifestyle of holiness. Thus, if our lifestyle does not express the beauty of holiness through an extravagant or exaggerated love for God, and you do not live, then you do not live in extreme or excessive submission to God. Then I invite you to make worship a non-negotiable priority in your life. We worship God because he is God. 
period. Our extravagant love and extreme submission to the Holy God flows out of the reality that God loves us first. It is highly appropriate to thank him for all the things he has done. True worship is shallow if it is solely an acknowledgement of God's wealth. Psalm 96 verse 5 to 6 says, For all the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord God made the heavens. Splendor and majesty are before him. Strength and glory are in his sanctuary. In other words, our worship must be towards the one who is worthy simply because of his identity as the omnipotent, omniscient, and omnipresent one. And not just because God is worthy and able to meet our needs and answer our prayers. We must focus our practice of worship on worthiness of God and not his wealthiness. Beloved, would you continue to worship God if from this day forward, God's miraculous signs and wonders were not profoundly evident in your life? Would God still be worthy of your worship? Or is your worship completely dependent upon your life? Do you only worship God for what he can do for you? Beloved, I leave you to answer these questions in your hearts as you listen to this message. Because of our God's unimaginable generosity towards us, God in all of his glory chooses to respond to us through our worship. This is the promise that when we worship God with extravagant love and extreme submission, He'll come and commune with us. The promise is not that we will feel great, that our heavy load will be lifted, but that God will come. And when God comes in his own time as a response to our worship, Psalm 96 verse 13 declares, let all creation rejoice before the Lord. For he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world in righteousness and the people in his faithfulness. In other words, when we worship our God, he will inspect our hearts first. The other benefits that we tend to expect because we lift our feeble hand and shout with our weak voices are worthless if our hearts are not right with God. Beloved, when we offer God our true worship, we are inviting him to inspect our hearts for anything that is not like him. This is the promise of worship. We can be transformed into God's likeness because he will reveal the truth about the condition of our hearts as we worship. Evaluate your expressions of worship so that through singing, declaring and giving, you will give to the Lord the glory he deserves. As in Psalm 96 verse 8. The promise is that when we worship God in this way, he will come and commune with us. And above all, God will respond to our worship by making our hearts more like his. Oh, hallelujah. Glory be to God. Amen. Let us pray, beloved. Father God, we thank you for your word. That is like a two-edged sword. Father God, we are so grateful for this message that has 
brought our minds back to worship. Lord God, remind us always when we go into worship to put this carnality aside and look to you alone. You alone because you are worthy of our worship. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Son. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Amen.